fade in on an office. Our trio of heroes sit or pace uneasily while they wait for their date with destiny. You know, you don't have to do the movie intro every time we go over the plan. Uh, I'm keeping Jason entertained. Do you want him to doze off and miss some vital piece of information? <laughs> that was supposed to keep me entertained? <clears throat> ah, yeah, actually, the whole movie thing's a great idea. Thank you. As I was saying, fade in on the office, where our heroes wait for their date with destiny. Will they be able to impress the auditor and keep their department from being shut down? Or worse, underfunded to the point where Ali can no longer afford the newest tech? No one can say for sure, but luckily, our trio never leaves anything to chance. All right, all right. Now that you set the scene, can we get on with the plan? Be my guest. All right, the auditor is set to arrive at 8.30 a.m. Now, you're not supposed to know exactly who you're going to get, but if my sources are right, and they always are, we can count on it being Dave from the fourth floor. Who's actually a good guy? He's the enemy. He's normally a good guy, but today he's the enemy. Exactly. So we have to convince him that our department is essential. And what better way to do that than by saving the day during the inspection? And that is where our friends from the OMM come in. Exhibit A, a mysterious chest found in a tomb somewhere in southern Iraq. Naturally, the OMM stepped in and took control of the excavation. In my hands is their greatest find of that dig. This chest is one of the lost eight treasures of the ancient Sumerian goddess of weaving, Utsu. It contains a spider figurine, which, if left out for long enough, magically animates and replicates itself. The spiders attack anybody in sight until the original is put back in the chest, so this is something that you definitely do not want to play around with. And something the OMM is going to have to answer a lot of questions about this time tomorrow. So, we have our emergency, but how do you stop an infinite army of spiders? Drum roll, please! Our very own Jason Phoenix, who bravely agreed to be part of a certain genius's experiment a while back and allowed himself to be bitten by a modified spider. Unfortunately, it was a bust and all he got out of it was unsightly hives. On the bright side, my studies show that spiders have a 12% increased fondness toward him. Best superpower ever. Luckily, that wasn't the end of the genius's experiment. Using extracts of spider pheromones mixed with Jason's as the base compound, I've synthesized a solution that should allow Jason to chemically communicate with the spiders. All we have to do is douse the original artifact with the solution, and it should open the connection between the spiders and Jason. Ooh, so bug juice makes me like the spider king. I'm going to need you to never say that again. <sighs> Basically... We have a manufactured emergency that we have complete control over. So, we release the spider. It'll take some time for it to warm up. In the meanwhile, Jason and I distract the auditor, Allie will douse the thing with her solution, and then we let the artifact and Dave's primal fear of spiders do the rest. Cause a scene, create havoc, terrify poor Dave, and then you two work your magic or uh, science, and I direct the spiders into a believable defeat. <sighs> I'm sorry I failed you, my loyal subjects. Dave is safe and sound, we're heroes, and we get our quarterly funding. Drinks after to celebrate. With the amount of spider biology I had to learn for this plan, we go for drinks no matter what. It's 8.39. Our pal Dave's running late. Mm, I've never been one for wishful thinking, but maybe he came to the conclusion that we're good enough to pass? Huh. Him getting lost in a cardboard box sounds more likely. How have you guys passed these things in the past? By being the best at what we do. Uh, plus a little bit of forgery, bribery, and blackmail. He's here. Act natural. All right, I'll be in my lab. Okay, okay. I don't have any experiments running at the moment. How to look busy. Oh, yes, pour the contents of one test tube into another. That looks legit. Uh, can I pretend to be helping you? I don't have anything to do with my desk. Uh, you don't have anything to do here, either! Hey guys, slight change in plan. What? You should see for yourselves. She's gonna be a problem. She? Unless I hadn't heard the news about Dave, Elijah's source has gotten a key detail very, very wrong. Oh, ho, 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 That's definitely not Dave. Fuck. Agent Romy Valdez, this is Jason Phoenix, the newest member of our team. And I think you already know Allie Watts. We've met. Hello again, Watts. <laughs> yeah, 
definitely. Uh, c- c- can you excuse us for a moment? This is not good. Someone's trying to shut us down. My thoughts exactly. Who is she? Romy Valdez, the best agent in the Cryptid Affairs and Operations Unit. Highest count in resolved cryptid capture, rescue, and termination cases in the past 20 years. And that's not even mentioning her field studies using Slavic hexes mixed with hoodoo. I've been told her work in the field was the stuff of legends. Right? I used to bug the crap out of everybody when I was like 12, saying her catchphrase all the time. All right, boys. Let's dance. She had a catchphrase? She got benched to a desk job five years ago. The chief of staff determined that she was too valuable of an asset to be killed out in the field. She still looks great for her age. I'd totally like- Alright, save your woman crush Wednesday gushing for later. I had no idea she was part of the auditing committee. Okay, bringing the subject back around to what matters right now, you're saying she won't be scared of spiders. Yeah, no. Eh, we'd get a hell of a show watching her deal with them, though. I'll just have to make them more aggressive, then. Harder to beat. And if you lose control? I won't. It's a bigger risk to do nothing. Ugh, fine. Let's do it. But just to be safe, hide all the weapons in the office. I don't want to make it any easier for her than we need to. Agreed. Okay, let's get back out there before she suspects something. Let me guess. You were expecting someone else? Uh, sort of. Mr. Speck had to deal with a personal problem. Apparently, he stepped on the eggs of a Klunaga, and it claimed his body as a new nesting spot. Ooh, that happens. Does it? I want to make it clear. I'm impartial. I'm not here to shut you down, but I'm not sugarcoating it either. That understood? Yes. Yes. Good. Who's up first? How long have you worked in the Technomancy unit? I don't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure Allie does. One year, five months, and two days. I'm still not sure if I actually work here or if they're just holding me prisoner. And what do you bring to the unit? Well, I have a bachelor's degree in U.S. history. (sighs) I've worked at Area 51, have four PhDs, and obviously I've been around the EPO. The PSRI, the Paranormal Security Research and Development Lab. Let's see, I was in the OMM. The DSC. The ERDD, the Enhanced Human Research and Training Center. Ooh, that was a wild month. I was the foremost advisor on cult threats at the Supernatural Enforcement and Security Division. The OPOI, the HIG, the XYZ. Now you're just making up acronyms. I've studied magic and the occult all around the world, so I'm intimately familiar with any number of threats from every corner of this planet. Oh, uh, I almost got sacrificed to a demon once. Does that count? And what's the goal of the Technomancy Unit? To prove the benefits between the unification of sorcery and science, which could solve problems that traditional units can't. Off the record, to prevent future casualties from Allie's less-than-ethical experiments. The extra office space is just a bonus. Oh, so we've uh, fought an evil ghost doctor, met an alien, exorcised a child-possessing demon, cleaned the house once. And in your professional estimation, would you say the unit has achieved these goals? (laughs) Obviously. Yeah, I I think we're achieving lots of our goals. Well, fatal office incidents are at an all-time low, so I'd have to say yes. And what about the program's weaknesses? It's failures. Uh, none that I've seen. Those words aren't in our vocabulary. Yeah, we've definitely had some missions that weren't strictly successes, but if you look at our records- I have looked at your records, and I know all about your successes. Now I'm asking about your failures. We actually have a high mission completion rate. And why would you say that is? Based on your tone, you already have your answer to that question. It's not my job to judge. That's your entire job. Not until I have all the facts. So- Tell me why you and your teammates have gone out of your way to avoid giving them to me. We're not trying to hide anything. Why was Jason and Phoenix assigned to this unit? What does that have to do with anything? EPO dollars are being diverted to pay the salary and expenses of an agent with no relevant experience. It wasn't our call. King assigned him to our unit. Why? He's part of an open case. Standard procedure says to keep an eye on him. Do we deputize every open case witness? I don't know. You'd have to ask King. I'll do that. So, what's your read on her? Ah, we have nothing to worry about. Really? Yeah, I had her completely charmed. Okay, I wasn't worried before, now I am. What do you think, Elijah? I don't know. Sometimes, I wish I could read his mind. Moody isn't exactly unusual for him, but he should be able to pull himself together when we have a job to do. What could Valdez have said that would have had him this distracted? Well, good thing we have a plan anyway. Speaking of which, let's get this thing going. 
the artifacts hidden under Elijah's desk, right next to the spell books, empty bottles, and, uh, a box? Huh, the label's been scratched out. What's with the box? You do your Christmas shopping early? Yeah, you're both getting socks, but only if she doesn't shut us down. Hey, Jason, go use your signature charm to see what she's thinking. Sure. Okay, seriously, what's in the box? Nothing that matters right now. Does, uh, this have anything to do with all your secret meetings with King recently? What? You heard me. Are you thinking about jumping ship? It's my ship. Then why are you keeping secrets? Why are you meeting with King? And why don't you seem to care whether or not we get shut down? I'm trying to figure out what her angle is, okay? As for King, it's not exactly a mystery why I'm talking to the guy hovering over our asses all the time. Well then why wasn't I invited to any of these meetings? Because believe it or not, the world doesn't revolve around you, Allie. Okay. And what about the box? Tapes from old cases. Is this interrogation over with? You can set the artifact up in your lab. Huh. You don't trust me to be alone in your office? Never have. Not about to start now. Better go quick while Spider King's got Valdez charmed. <clears throat> Ow, shit, 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 shit. Ow, shit. You okay? Yeah, I stubbed my toe. Ugh. Did you charm any information out of her? I, uh... I may have overestimated our connection. Oh, really? I'm shocked. Plan B it is, then. I unlock the chest and carefully pull the spider statue out of it. How long do you have before it comes to life? <sighs> about ten minutes, and in about five I gotta douse it with a pheromone or this day is not gonna go well. What's he doing? Elijah's leaning on the desk next to Agent Valdez. It doesn't look like a friendly conversation. I have no idea. Your co-workers seem to be curious about our conversation. Don't worry about them. I made Allie install soundproof glass. The explosions were migraine-inducing. There must be quite a few of them, then. I know what you're trying to do. This unit's good, and I'm not going to tell you anything that suggests otherwise. Then why are you here? I've been thinking about something you said earlier. About why you think we have such a high success rate. I'm not here to discuss that. But I would like to know what you and Agent Watts were talking about in your office when Phoenix was supposed to be distracting me. Nothing important to your job. King has a deal with Dave Speck. He gives you a good review and your department stays open. Why the hell would King... You think he's actually putting his job on the line for us? That would explain why you and your co-workers have been panicking since I got here. <laughs> that is just rich. I bet you also think he's doctoring our reports too to make us look good. Or, or maybe he's assigning us classified cases so he wouldn't have to. You said it, not me. That's a load of crap. We're some of the best field agents in our profession. But you're not. You're kids, play acting as agents. You think you're all that because you have your own unit, when in reality, it's because you piss off everyone you work with. So why wouldn't they just fire us? That's what I'm here to find out. You're not going to find anything. Then you'll have no problem letting me get back to work. Please, be my guest. Oh shit, he's coming back. Pretend we weren't watching. You were watching, weren't you? No. It's not looking good. She basically told me she's got it out for us. Shit. You think the plan will win her over? It has to, or else we're done. I mean, it's not that I'm not excited to unleash an arachnid havoc on the entire office, but even if it does go sideways, we still have King. What can he do? Uh, he owes us a favor. Ah, yeah, not anymore. What about babysitting his demon daughter? I had to use it when I went to the OMM for the grimoire. No way around it. You used our one and only favor to get a book? It was a book to get you to another dimension, which I remember being pretty important to you at the time. A heads up would have been nice. What's it to you? Oh, nothing. Just that I'd, you know, like to get my memories back and my odds of doing that go down if you get canned. Still beats being dead, which is where you'd be without us. So maybe remember that when you want to mouth off. <laughs> Whatever you say. Now you're getting it. Allie, you'll take care of the artifact? Yeah. You trying to piss him off? I'm not gonna pretend to be friends with a psychopath. Huh, but you're still talking to me, which means that you must think I'm more ethical than Elijah. Oh my god, what have I become? You weren't the one who wanted to steal a little girl's emotions. That's it? That's your line? Something like that, yeah. Well, suck it up. I'm the only one who gets to be pissed at Elijah right now because he is definitely hiding something. 
If only I could get to his office without him seeing me. My eyes fall on the ventilation grating above me. Huh. Okay, new plan. What? We're not doing the spiders? Yes, we are. Yes, yeah. You'll still get to be Spider King or whatever. This is another plan. Elijah had a box of tapes in his office, and he doesn't want me to see them. But you're going to watch them anyway? Yep. Want me to distract him while you sneak into his office? You read my mind. Ha! Getting into Elijah's office is child's play. You'd have thought the first thing you would have done after moving in is lock the air vents. Ha! Lucky me. Oh, wow. Didn't bother moving the box. It's like you don't even know me, Elijah. Of course, his lack of caution could mean he was telling the truth, and it really is just a box of old case tapes. What are you hiding, Elijah, and who could we possibly have this much surveillance footage of? Subject Phoenix? Wait, are they all... Subject Phoenix, date September 3rd, 2019, location Freudian Sip Coffee House. Whoa, how far do they go back? May 2019, January, July 2018? Wait, where's the latest one? Here. Here. August 25th, two days before we found him. Just security cam footage of Jason in a dark alley. Not a good place to be, Jason. No wonder the idiot almost got sacrificed. And what do you know? He's joined by some old friends. Dumb fuck cultist one and two. Hey, guys. One of them shoves him up against a wall. What did you tell them? Okay, you have a knife. Uh, You're going to have to be a lot more specific than that. I tell a lot of people a lot of things. The organization. Uh, doesn't clear it up much? The EPO, they're tracking our movements. The EPO? I I swear I didn't tell them anything. You might be telling the truth. Obvious. But (laughs) we can't take that chance. What? He looks down to see a syringe sticking out of his arm. That's not good. Well, shit. (coughs) Jason, 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 you would not believe what I just- You were supposed to douse the artifact three minutes ago. It takes a moment for my brain to switch tracks and figure out what the hell he's talking about. Oh shit, 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 shit. It hasn't animated yet, right? Would I be sitting here if it had? Mm, Good point. (sighs) There. It's not that far off. It'll still work. I hope so. Uh, it it will work, but eh, don't tell Elijah. What, you think I want him pissed at me for distracting him? So, what did you find? Something crazy, but it's too much to explain right now. Remind me when this is all over. What's that? We both spin around to see the spider twitching rapidly. Ooh, now's the moment of truth. A shudder passes through the spider's body, and then the twitching stops. It stares at us with all of its eight unblinking eyes. Uh, Jason, Jason, why don't you try telling him what to do? Uh, okay. Hey, mister, uh, wait, do you think it's a boy or a girl? I I don't think it matters. Hey, uh, buddy, can you come here? The spider takes a step towards him. Hey, there you go. Yeah, aren't you a good little spider? It freezes. Uh, maybe don't be so patronizing. Oh, uh. Sorry. Here, spider, spider, spider. Whoa! Uh, bad spider, spider. It leaps over his head and onto the wall behind him. I go for the stun gun I keep taped under my lab table, but my fingers close around empty air. Where's my stun gun? You said to hide all the weapons. The spider scuttles over the ceiling above us. Shit! Valdez and Elijah! What the hell are you doing? Startled by the new threat, the spider shoots a web at her. She immediately leaps into action, doing a dive roll across the lab. Oh, so cool. What's he doing? Up above us, the spider has gone back to scurrying, except now, as it does, almost identical copies of itself are left in its trail, like previous frames in a flipbook. Already there are dozens of them, all slightly faded, but very much alive clones of the first. Get down! The spiders turn to dust, but for everyone she kills, at least two more are created. This is useless. Everyone out! Is there any way out of that room? We all spin around to see Elijah's office slowly filling with spiders. That's not good. Go, go, go! (laughs) 
Hopefully we get there before they do. I always told those idiots that interconnected ventilation systems were a mistake. Ah, uh, the EPO also didn't think too hard about department distribution, which is how we somehow ended up floor neighbors with the most useless idiots you can imagine. Civilian interference in public management. Not who I'd choose. She grabs the intercom phone. Attention. There is an active security threat. I will need all of you to stay calm so we can deal with it. That was predictable. Fucking office agents. Floor 7 to head office. We have a class 3 threat. Shut the building down. I repeat, shut the building down. So, um, how do you think this affects our funding? Shut up! Now you three are going to tell me what's happening. Why would we know? I think it's pretty obvious. Spiders? Cut the crap. I know you were trying to stage an emergency so I'd give you a good report. And how do you know that? Because the problem started in your lab. Because Agent Speck is deathly afraid of spiders and because that is exactly what I'd expect from a unit like yours. She has a pretty good point. We don't have time for this. What was your plan to stop them? They were supposed to be under Jason's control. Yeah, well, the pheromones didn't work. Wow, so you're telling me biology couldn't work on inanimate objects? I'm just shocked. Utterly shocked. Okay, I'm a physicist, not an entomologist. You come up with a plan next time. Enough! Is there another way? We have to get the original artifact back in its chest. All right, then. She punches a code into the CIP's emergency safe and pulls out an impressively big gun. I'll stop the spiders. You get these people out. You can't take them on alone. I can watch my own back. She slings the gun over her shoulder and leaves. I wait till she's out of earshot. Let's show her what we're about, Elijah. He stares at me blankly. Come on. I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but Alakazam those suckers. Come on, come on. Summon it. Summon it. Yeah, like Axio Spider or whatever. It's an ancient treasure belonging to a Sumerian spider goddess. It can't be summoned. Useless. Says the pot to the kettle. (sighs) Then we go with the old plan. They weren't attacking Jason. It jumped at my head. Over your head. It jumped over your head. They were not taking orders. Right. That's fine, as long as you can get close enough to the original. Look, it's either this or let Valdez take all the credit and our jobs along with it. Where would it even be? Sumerian magic is tricky, but the artifact would stick close to the chest since that's where its source of power comes from. So, we just gotta get to my lab. Uh, hey, you! I pull a panicking CIP agent into our conversation. Where's, uh, where's Conti and Enzo's desks? He mutely points. Great! I make quick work of collecting what I need from each respective desk. Behind me, Elijah gathers a few of the agents. We're going to take care of this, but you all have to get out of here. Yes, sir. Jason joins me just as I get the last item I need. So why did you need these two specific desks? Because Enzo's hair would never stay that perfect on its own. And because Conti has taken approximately five smoke breaks every day for the last six years. You're going into a fight with an infinite army of spiders with hairspray and a cigarette lighter. Uh, No, we're going into a fight with an army of spiders with hairspray and a cigarette lighter. Plus, whatever voodoo you're going to use. Fine. Jason, just get to that spider, no matter what. Allie and I will see if we can give you some breathing room. Keep in contact. He hands him a walkie-talkie. How did I end up with the most dangerous part in this plan? I put a hand on his shoulder. Because you're the only one with the power to do it. And with great power comes great responsibility. Eh? Eh? I'm above the lab. Over. Did you just say over? It's good walkie etiquette. Over. Nerd. Elijah yanks the walkie out of my hands. He wasn't as excited as Jason and me to be crawling around in air vents. He was even less thrilled that we were going to be fighting hordes of spiders in said vents. Do you have a visual of the lab? Yeah, they uh, took out a ton of the ceiling panels earlier. Really makes me feel safe crawling around on them. Do you see the original spider? Uh, yeah, yeah, there he is. I snatched the walkie back. How many spiders are there? Ah, uh, well, one, two, three, four... Oh my god, estimate! I don't know, 100? 150 maybe? Once we lure them away, you make your move. You have to be quick, pheromone or not. Once you grab the original, the others will retaliate. Well, yeah, I could have guessed that myself. Oh, that is not good. What? Uh, it looks like we're not the only ones with a plan. Veltez. Where is she? Outside the lab. They haven't noticed her yet, but 
That is a pretty big gun. Elijah hands me the walkie. You stay here. I'll go talk her down. How about you stay here and I go talk her down? I don't have time to mess around. And you don't trust me to stop her. I trust you to stop a bunch of spiders. Fine. Go. Be convincing or we're all screwed. Give me five minutes, then start drawing them away. I nod and watch him until he disappears around a corner. (sighs) Nothing to do now but wait. I pull out my walkie. Jason, Elijah's coming now. See him yet? No. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There he is. Get over there and leave your walkie on. But don't let them see you. Oh. Doing some eavesdropping. Over. Shut up. Should have known you would try something. Letting an EPO icon fight a losing battle would reflect poorly on us. And you think saving the day will change my report how? This isn't about the report. Well, maybe a little. Either way, going in guns blazing won't work. I've been at this for 25 years. Trust me, this is the best way. Yeah, the best way to piss off an infinite horde of spiders. Listen, Ali made some kind of chemical that made the spiders more... Ugh, affectionate to Jason. They won't hurt him, so we'll draw most of them off while he goes for the original. Except we already ruled out that idea. Allie thinks it could still work. And if it doesn't? Then you're free to shoot all the spiders you want. So what do you say? Want to be bait for an army of spiders? I can't believe I'm saying this, but fine. We'll go with your plan. But I hope you brought something more intimidating than your good looks. I like the way you think. Let's get these bastards. All right, boys, let's dance. Holy shit, she said it! They're coming your way. Oh, man, why can't we be that cool? I jump out of the vent into the hallway below. If I'm gonna make a last stand with one of the EPO greats, it's not gonna be hunched over. Reloading! Cover me! I got you! I pull out my makeshift weapon. Good thing Enzo just restocked. Looks like most of them took the bait. Okay, big guy. Just me and you. Hurry up! The spider definitely made good use of its time. We're mowing these things down, but they just keep coming. Uh, You know, we really should change the saying to breeds like spiders instead of rabbits. Jason! I'm almost there. Just a few more feet. See? No sudden movements. Okay. I'm just gonna pick you up. Nice and easy. What a good spider. You're not keeping it when this is over. Oh, ignore him. We're gonna be best friends. Now let's just put you in your home. It's over. Mmm, not quite over, actually. As soon as Valdez informs the higher-ups that the threat has been taken care of, an army of janitors descend on floor 7. The upside to the spiders all turning to dust is, of course, that they aren't trying to kill us anymore. The downside is the massive cleaning bill. We all hang out in the office trying to figure out exactly how much trouble we're in without asking. Finally, Elijah goes over to Agent Valdez. So, after everything that's happened, can I assume that the Technomancy unit is done for? You know, today was the first time in a long time I've seen any action, since they forced me into a desk job. I'd be lying if I didn't say it wasn't fun. You're welcome. I'm not passing you just because I had a good time. But you are passing us, right? You're still just kids running around with your heads up your own asses. But I gotta say, you did good. And I want to see what happens when the kids grow up. Thanks. See you around. She hoists the gun over her shoulder and saunters out. Ah! Elijah answers it, and, uh, and Jason takes the opportunity to slide his rolling chair across the room to my desk. So, um, do you think Elijah would have a problem with me keeping Spinner? What? Who's... You named the spider, didn't you? Well, I can't keep calling him Good Spider, though I will definitely also be calling him that. Oh, if he finds out, it won't be from me. Thanks. Allie. King wants us in his office. (sighs) To congratulate us on our daring heroics, I'm sure. King sits behind his desk with his normal, so much better than thou attitude. But that's not what catches my attention. I immediately stare at the box of tapes in front of him. Agent Watts, congratulations on saving the base today, and on the Technomance unit passing Valdez's inspection. Yeah, thanks. Agent Long has informed me of your recent 
interest in the private meetings he and I have. <laughs> Not so private meetings. But yeah, go on. Regardless, he's also informed me of your persistence about the contents of this box that he stupidly hid in his office. You're the one that put them there, genius. And instead of moving them to a hidden location, you left them there, like an amateur. Save it for later. Why do you have tapes of Jason? <clears throat> for the record, I was against this. Agent Long, on the other hand, convinced me that once you set your mind on something, you're relentless. It's in our best interest to have you in on the secret rather than on the other side of it. As you've no doubt already guessed, the EPO has been watching Mr. Phoenix for some time now. Obviously. Why? Just watch this and you'll understand. It's dated December 28th, 2019, the day after the last thing Jason can remember. He's in an alley, the same he'd get abducted from in eight months. And he's with the cultists. Looks like the whole gang's here. Hey guys, you're a bit late, but I won't hold it against you. Who are you? Someone who's, uh, interested in your line of work? You can call me Jason. And what would our line of work be? Oh, come on. You're not exactly subtle. You're obviously cultists. Children of brimstone, to be exact. Or, well, you want to be. But they're not a super welcoming bunch. What do you want with us? I want what you want, to get you guys into the club. You're not exactly doing a good job of impressing anybody right now. And what would you suggest? Well, the children of Brimstone are the real deal. If you want to join them, you can't play it safe. You want membership? You have to earn it by summoning a demon. And not just any demon. I'm talking the world-ending type. And I can help you with that. What do you get out of this? Doesn't matter. Do we have a deal? They exchange a long look. If you can do what you promise, yes. Great. Happy to be in business with you. I follow Elijah back into the office, still trying to process what the hell I just saw. Jason comes up. Hey, how'd it go with King? Are we still in business? We are. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Well, okay then. No loss there. So, uh, what was it you wanted to tell me earlier? Uh, you know, it doesn't matter. It wasn't important anyway. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, I, I'm fine. I'll be in my lab if you need me. What happened to getting drinks tonight? <sighs> Maybe some other time. Go home. Get some sleep. I'll see you tomorrow. But- I don't hear his response as I turn to leave. I just keep hearing the recording of his voice on the loop in my head. Jason wanted to summon a demon. Maybe not the way it actually ended up. Getting sacrificed probably wasn't part of the plan, but it had been his idea all along. Who was he? Why did he want to summon a world-ending demon? And most importantly, was he planning on trying again? The Technomancy Project, Season 1, Episode 6, Best Laid Plans. This episode was written by Emily Consaga. The role of Allie was played by Aaron Nicole Lundquist. The role of Jason was played by Daniel Lear. The role of Elijah was played by Jostin Tong. The role of Agent King was played by Sean King. The role of Romy Valdez was played by Kim Consaga. The roles of Cultist 1 and 2 were played by Hunter Logan and Christopher Consaga. And the role of CIP Agent was played by Emily Consaga. The main theme was composed by Arjuna Woods, and the end titles were composed by Sean King. Additional music was composed by Scott Buckley. If you enjoyed this episode, please follow us on all our social media. Stay safe out there, Waterfalls.